Imagine a massive triceratops collapsing in a muddy riverbank, its final breath lost to time. But this isn't the end of its story. It's the beginning. Fossilization starts with death, but not every dinosaur that died became a fossil. Most decayed and disappeared. The few that became fossils had to be buried quickly by mud, sand, ash, or sediment before scavengers or bacteria could destroy the body. This sudden burial shields the remains from the elements, setting the stage for a process that can take millions of years. Think of it like nature's slow motion preservation locking away the dinosaur's bones under layers of earth. It's a rare combination of luck timing and geology. For every fossil we find, there are likely millions that vanished forever. Yet, when everything goes just right, the bones are protected long enough to begin the slow transformation into stone. This process doesn't just preserve the shape, it preserves a moment in deep time frozen beneath our feet. Fossils aren't just bones, they're windows into worlds long gone. So how do those bones turn into rock? That's where the magic of geology steps in and it begins just under the surface. After a dinosaur dies and is buried, nature begins its quiet work. Over time, more sediment piles on top layer upon layer of mud, silt, and minerals from rivers or volcanic eruptions. This compression removes oxygen and slows down decay, turning the soft sediment into hard rock. Meanwhile, groundwater rich in minerals starts to seep through the remains. These waters carry elements like calcium silica and iron, which slowly replace the organic material in the bones molecule by molecule. It's a process called permineralization. The original bone might dissolve away, but its shape remains now made entirely of stone. Sometimes even delicate structures like blood vessels or feathers are preserved if conditions are perfect. This transformation can take tens of thousands or even millions of years. And while it may seem like a simple chemical exchange, the truth is that fossilization is incredibly rare. That's why every fossil we find is precious. It's a miracle of preservation that survived time pressure and nature's decay. Fossils aren't made quickly or easily. They're geological masterpieces formed under just the right conditions and they lie waiting underground untouched until erosion or excavation brings them back to light. Not everything fossilizes. In fact, most soft tissues like skin, muscles, and organs decay long before mineralization begins. That's why most dinosaur fossils we find are bones teeth or sometimes footprints. But in extraordinary cases, conditions align just right to preserve soft parts too. For example, in places like China's Liaoning province, ancient lakes covered dinosaurs with fine volcanic ash, creating fossils so detailed we can see feathers and skin impressions. In rare cases, entire dinosaur embryos or even stomach contents have been preserved, giving us glimpses into their last meals. But these cases are the exception, not the rule. Most fossils are incomplete and paleontologists have to piece together clues from scattered bones and fragments. It's like assembling a 100 million year old jigsaw puzzle without the box. Over time, fossils can also be damaged by geological forces like earthquakes or erosion. Some are flattened, others distorted, but even broken fossils carry valuable information. They tell us where dinosaurs lived, how they died, and what their world was like. So when we find even a single tooth or claw, it's worth studying. Because in the fossil record, every piece counts and every detail matters. How do fossils leave their rocky tombs and reach museum shelves? The journey begins when erosion exposes fossil-bearing rocks, wind rain, and time slowly wearing away the surface. Once a paleontologist suspects a fossil is nearby, they begin a careful search. Often, only a small bone fragment peeks through. Excavation is slow, deliberate work. Using brushes, picks, and even dental tools, scientists uncover the fossil bit by bit. 
They map its position, record the sediment around it, and protect it with plaster jackets before transporting it to labs. There, the fossil is cleaned, stabilized, and sometimes reconstructed. It might be scanned with CT machines to reveal internal details, or analyzed for chemical signatures that tell us about its age or diet. Modern technology allows us to study fossils without damaging them, but the process still begins with boots on the ground and patience in the field. Fossils don't just appear, they're earned through effort and care. Each one must be studied in context, like a crime scene. Where it was found, what layers surrounded it, even its position. All these clues help build the story. It's not just about finding bones. It's about resurrecting a world. When people think of fossils, they imagine skeletons. But fossils come in many forms. There are body fossils, like bones, teeth, and shells, but also trace fossils. These include footprints, nests, bite marks, and even coprolites, fossilized poop. These traces give insight into behavior, how a dinosaur walked, how it hunted, even how it parented. A nest of fossilized eggs tells us about reproductive habits. A set of tracks frozen in stone can show a herd moving together or a predator chasing prey. Some fossils are impressions, not remains. A feather imprint in stone might be all that's left of a dinosaur's soft body. Even chemical fossils exist molecules preserved in rock that hint at ancient biology. And then there are pseudo-fossils, rock shapes that look like fossils, but aren't. These can confuse even seasoned scientists. In recent years, technology has uncovered microscopic fossils, revealing the oldest traces of life on Earth. From massive skeletons to invisible cells, fossils come in all sizes and shapes. Each one tells a story not just about the creature itself, but about its world, its behavior, and its final moments. Fossils are nature's diary written in stone. Over millions of years, the Earth's crust moves, shifts, and changes. As more sediment builds up over buried remains, the pressure increases. The heat and compression transform the sediment into sedimentary rock and aid the fossilization process. However, too much heat or pressure can destroy the fossil entirely. Fossilization is a delicate balance. Imagine baking a cake, too little heat, and it's raw, too much, and it's ruined. Nature must apply just the right geological ingredients to preserve the remains. The surrounding rock also helps date the fossil through radiometric dating or by comparing the layers stratigraphy. When paleontologists find a fossil, they examine its surrounding sediment for volcanic ash or known fossil layers to estimate its age. These methods allow scientists to place the fossil within Earth's timeline, and time in this case is measured in epochs and eras. The rocks tell us not just when the dinosaur lived, but also how Earth looked, what plants grew, what other animals lived there, and what the climate was like. Fossils are like bookmarks in Earth's ancient diary, marked by time and trapped by pressure. Understanding this slow process helps us appreciate just how remarkable each fossil discovery is. Throughout history, certain fossil finds have changed the way we see the past. The discovery of the first iguanodon tooth in England in 1802 led to the naming of dinosaurs themselves. Later, the bone wars of the 19th century between Edward Cope and Othniel Marsh unearthed dozens of new species in North America. In more recent decades, the discovery of feathered dinosaurs in China revolutionized our understanding of the dinosaur-bird connection. These fossils showed clear feather imprints proving that many dinosaurs were not scaly beasts, but bird-like creatures. One famous fossil, Archaeopteryx, found in Germany, bridged the gap between dinosaurs and birds. Another groundbreaking find was Sue, the most complete T. rex skeleton ever discovered shedding light on the anatomy growth and lifestyle of the most famous predator in history. Each fossil discovery adds a puzzle piece to the grand picture of life's history. Some finds confirm theories, others challenge everything we thought we knew. 
That's the beauty of fossils. They constantly rewrite the story of Earth. For older audiences, it's fascinating to see how much we've learned in just the last few decades and how many secrets still lie buried. Once fossils are excavated and studied, many end up in museums. But the path from dig site to display is long and complex. After preparation in the lab where bones are cleaned, restored, and stabilized, scientists decide which fossils are fit for public view. Sometimes only casts or replicas are shown, especially if the original is too fragile. Museums design detailed exhibits adding life-sized reconstructions, murals, and interactive displays to help visitors visualize the living creature. For older generations who grew up with simpler museum displays, today's technology brings fossils to life in new ways. 3D scans, augmented reality, and digital tours make learning more engaging than ever. Educational programs, documentaries, and books also spread fossil knowledge far and wide. And paleontologists often work with artists to create accurate models of dinosaurs based on fossil evidence. This partnership turns bones into believable creatures. Public engagement is crucial because it turns curiosity into support for science. When someone over 40 walks into a museum and sees a towering dinosaur, they're not just looking at bones. They're connecting with Earth's deep past and maybe remembering their own childhood wonder. Fossils aren't just relics, they're bridges between generations. You don't have to visit a famous dig site to encounter fossils. In fact, fossils can be found in surprising places. Road cuts, quarries, deserts, even backyards. Many regions around the world are fossil rich, especially places with exposed sedimentary rock. In the U.S., states like Montana, Utah, and South Dakota are fossil hotspots. But even in places with fewer visible rocks, ancient marine fossils can be found in limestone or shale. Older adults who enjoy gardening or hiking might have walked past fossil-bearing rocks without realizing it. Amateur fossil hunters have even made significant discoveries. Of course, fossil collecting should always be done responsibly and legally. Protected areas often forbid removal, and it's best to report finds to local museums or geological surveys. Even common fossils like trilobites or ammonites can teach us about the environments that existed long before humans. The ground beneath our feet holds stories older than our species. For those over 40 who may remember fossil hunting as a childhood hobby, it's never too late to rediscover that excitement. Fossils connect us not just to Earth's past, but to our own past, our curiosity, our wonder, and our thirst for discovery. In a world obsessed with speed and technology, fossils remind us of the long game. They are time capsules of evolution, extinction, and adaptation. Understanding fossils helps us comprehend how life responds to climate shifts, disasters, and environmental change lessons we urgently need today. They tell us that life is resilient, but also fragile. Entire species have come and gone, leaving only stone behind. For audiences over 40, this perspective can be grounding. We've lived through decades of change, political, environmental, technological. But fossils stretch our timeline back hundreds of millions of years. They give us context, they challenge our assumptions, and they inspire awe. Holding a fossil, or even seeing one up close, can be a humbling experience. It puts our human story into perspective. And perhaps most importantly, fossils ignite curiosity. Whether you're 8 or 80, discovering how a dinosaur became rock sparks imagination, it's not just about ancient bones, it's about understanding the earth, our place in it, and what legacy we'll leave behind. Because if the rocks remember the dinosaurs, what will they remember of us? And while fossils are remnants of the past, they are also signposts for the future. Scientists studying ancient extinction events like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs use that knowledge to understand today's biodiversity crisis. What happens when ecosystems collapse? How long does recovery take? Fossils help answer these questions. They remind us 
that while Earth always bounces back, the process takes millions of years. For humans, time is precious. So these ancient bones speak a quiet but urgent message. Respect nature's limits. Moreover, fossils ignite intergenerational conversations. A grandparent sharing a fossil collection with a curious grandchild connects two lifetimes through a creature that died a hundred million years ago. That shared wonder is priceless. Whether you found your first fossil in a schoolyard or a science exhibit, the feeling is the same, a spark of connection to the great story of life. And as we continue digging, scanning, and uncovering, we're not just learning about the past, we're building a legacy of discovery for future generations to carry on. Because every fossil isn't just a relic. It's a reminder that life leaves traces, and those traces can still inspire awe.